Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of the Bobby Bones Show. We're so honored to have on the show, he's a rock and roll hall of famer, the last living member of Leonard Skinner Band, and also he's got his own incredible band, Artemis Pyle Band, Artemis Pyle. Eric, how you doing, man? Doing great. It's so great. nice to finally have you on the show. So let me just uh, address what you, thank you. Um, it's great to be here. Um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I, I am. I'm a member of the Hall of Fame. Yes, you are. But, but Ronnie Van Zant, uh, because of his prolific writing, mm -hmm. that's what got me into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, because I never grew up, you know, saying I'm going to be in the Hall of Fame. It's something that happened. Uh, I found out it's kind of a, a big deal. It's a special club, and I'm, I'm proud to be included. But, but that, was, uh, that was Ronnie Van Zant's. Uh, vision that, that got me in. Well, and also your prolific drumming, and I got to bring this up, Artemis, it's not a bad thing whenever Kid Rock is the one to introduce you. Oh, at, or, the, at the Hall of Fame. At the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Um, I didn't know he was going to introduce us. Uh, I've, I've known him for uh, quite a few years. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm glad he came up and did that for us. Um, but the, the other, you know, the, the point uh, that, that you had made about being in the Hall of Fame right. and being the last living member. Mm -hmm. it, and Eric, you know, we, we were talking about it earlier. It is not a good feeling to be the last living member of Leonard Skinner. It's a bad feeling. Yeah. And I don't brag about it and I don't take it lightly. Uh, a few months ago, uh, uh, four plus, we lost the uh, founding, one of the founding members, the last founding member, mm -hmm. Gary Rossington. Yep. And there was nobody like Gary. He was a very gentle, uh, shy person, uh, but he was just, you know, a, a great person. And we lost him. He was 71. Uh, myself and two of my band members went down for the uh, services. Uh, Paul Rogers from Bad Company mm -hmm. spoke. Uh, Simon Kirk was there. Travis Tritt sang a song. Kid Rock was there. The, you know, the people came to say goodbye to Gary. All of his beautiful guitars were all over the chapel, the main chapel, the overflow chapel. Uh, his grandchildren were there. I took three brand new cotton handkerchiefs and gave one to each of his daughters, Mary Elizabeth and Annie Kathleen, and one to uh, Miss Judy Van Zant. And I knew that they would need them yeah. because it was going to be a hard day for all of them. And of course, Gary's wife, Dale. But that, you know, a couple of people came up and said, hey man, can I get a selfie? You're, you know, you're the last living member. And I said, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Not the place for and it. And not the place or the time. And um, then we went down after Gary's service, we went down to where Judy had, uh, uh, Judy Van Zandt mm -hmm. had um, moved Ronnie. And it was on a beautiful pond with a big fountain and a grove of bamboo. It's very quiet. Wow. It's got some Charlie Daniels stuff that Charlie mm -hmm. had put in there. Um, so we spent some time there with, uh, Paul Rogers and Simon from bad company and, uh, Judy had to catch a plane, but, you know, I just wanted to make sure that, that everybody knows that my band, mm -hmm. our band, right. Jerry Lida, Dave Fowler, Scott Raines and, and Brad Durden, we've been together 15 years right? and we play this music better than any band in the world mm -hmm. with heart. Um, it's, it's not about looking like uh, the, the band. Mm -hmm. It's about sounding like the music and having, I don't require the, any of the, our singers, we have three vocalists and they're all great. And I don't require them to try to sound like Ronnie. Right. They, they are from Alabama, Georgia, and, Nor and North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And they are Southern rock guys. I'm 75. They're like 60 and 55. They grew up with the music. They love it as much as I do. Right. They sing it with respect, honor, and accuracy. And, and people love us wherever we play, mm -hmm. no matter who we play with. Uh, the crowd always comes forward on us. They fist bump and they, because it's the sound. And then I drive it right. the way I'm supposed to drive right. it. Because only you can do that. Because, I mean, you know, coming up with those parts and being with, you know, Leonard Skinner since 74, you know, when, when you started with them, it's like, you know, you, you're a part of that history, Artemis. And, and that's why I always wanted to bring up, well, I've got you in here to where we can talk about anthems 
your new album that's coming out in February, to where it's like, I mean, what a great idea to do this with the Artemis Pile Band, but also to where you've got, uh, you know, a few guests such as Dolly Parton, <laughs> Billy yeah. Ray Cyrus. I mean, how did this come together? Sammy Hagar. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> well, can I, I, I'd like to mention our record company, uh, Get Joe Records out of Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and Spinning Plates has been doing PR. So we have a, a, a great team in place uh, that knows the business. I don't know the business. I know how to play drums. And um, so I love the name of the album, Anthems, okay. because Ronnie didn't write just hit songs or hit albums. Um, he wrote anthems that will be around for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. And so what we wanted to do, the band, APB, uh, you know, promoters like to refer to the Artemis Pyle band um, because it's got name recognition and Artemis Pyle is kind of a weird name, G Gomer Pyle, Artemis. So, uh, but it, it's really all points bulletin. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and some days it's all possible baloney. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, APB, all possible something. Um, but we kid about that. Um, we wanted to do a tribute to Ronnie Van Zant, his music, and his band. Right. And I'm lucky to be included in that. Mm -hmm. um, Bob Burns, uh, I loved the way Bob played. He loved this band. Bob was in our band. Right. He'd come out and play three or four songs. People in the audience cried seeing Bob and I play together. The two real drummers of the real Leonard Skinner, both mm -hmm. inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame at the same time. He played Sweet Home Alabama, and I, I did Freebird, and Bob called me, and he goes, Artemis, <laughs> it's Bob. And I said, okay, first, Bob, nobody calls me at 4.30 in the morning. Secondly, nobody has a voice like yours, so I know it's you. <laughs> and he goes, man, we're being inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, man. <laughs> and he goes, what are we going to do? And I said, well, I said, you're, you were there before I. Uh, you're the senior member, and, and it's your call. Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, you play Freebird. I haven't played in a few years, and I'll, I'll do Sweet Home Alabama. And I swear, Eric, looking that night at the Waldorf Astoria with Sting and the, the, the royalty of rock and roll, mm -hmm. because it was Black Sabbath, Blondie, the Sex Pistols, Miles Davis, oh and us gosh. being recorded. What, right. a, what a class, the 21st class. So it's just incredible. You know, I looked over at Bob, and I'm in full, I'm a Marine, so I know mm -hmm. how to wear a uniform. I dress like a slob now. But anyway, um, I, I'm military, and I put on a tuxedo, mm -hmm. and I, I made it look right. And I got out there and played Freebird in a tuxedo. First and last time that'll ever happen. <laughs> but I looked over and I saw Bob and tears came to my eyes because here's Bob Burns. He's a 16 year old kid with a carport on the west side of Jacksonville, Florida. And he let Ronnie and Gary come over and practice in his carport. Oh my gosh. And, and I, I looked at him and he played Sweet Home Alabama spot on. <sighs> The tempo, it was perfect. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I mean, tears came to my eyes. And uh, Well, and it was such a family as well, you know, with you and, and all of the musicians yeah. and Leonard Skinner, just like it is with APB now. You know, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's more than just musicians playing together, Artemis. We're, we're a band of brothers. Right. And uh, whenever we can, I mean, we did uh, Ryman Auditorium to raise money for breast cancer awareness with Dolly. Uh, Dolly sent her backup singers out to sing Sweet Home Alabama with us. We, her producer, Kent Wells, one of the most amazing people in the world, uh, is one of the reasons that we got anthems done. Right. Because of the credentials that he had being with Dolly, who to me is the number one human being on this planet. Mm -hmm. She's a humanitarian. Singer, songwriter, movie star. She can play guitar as good as a man. But that girl is a humanitarian. Definitely. And she agreed to sing Freebird on our album. And this is before she recorded any rock songs mm -hmm. for her new rock star album. Mm -hmm. you know, and this... she was just inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, see, Eric, <laughs> we're in the studio and I said, Dolly, because I'm inducted, I get to vote. So this year you're on the ballot. So I'm, of course, I'm voting for you. And she goes, you know, her true humble self. She goes, oh, I don't think I deserve it because... 
you know, I'm not a, you know, rock and roller. Mm -hmm. And I said, you've done rock stuff. And I said, Dolly, you deserve everything. You know, I, I said, I'm going to vote for you. And, and she goes, well, I guess I'll accept, but I'm going to have to do a rock album. And, <laughs> and she said, can I put Freebird on my rock album? And I'm like, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so now we got this coming out. Hers mm -hmm. is coming out in November. Right. A rock star. Yeah. And it's 30 songs. She's doing stuff yeah. with Ringo Starr and Paul McCartney. And you've got 20 songs on anthems. We got, I think it's 14. 14? Okay, I knew it was a high number. I think it's 14. And so we're on her new album. And I was listed as a drummer and percussionist on her album, Thank You, Lord, <laughs> with Mick Fleetwood and Ringo Starr, by the way. It Good says, company. It says my son's name, Christopher Pyle, Artemis Pyle, Ringo Starr, Mick Fleetwood, drums and percussion. And I'm, my son called me, he goes, Dad, I think I'm going to cry. You know? <laughs> and uh, it, it's just a great moment. And she's on our album, yeah. along with great people like Sammy Hagar. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, Billy Ray Cyrus sings Breeze and he makes it a road tune. So, you know, we appreciate being able to talk about our new album. We think it's a great tribute album. It's done, you know, like I said, the guys I mentioned, yeah. Dave and Brad and Scott and Jerry and myself, we are the basic track. Right. And we did it at Kent Wells Studios where Dolly does some stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was just a perfect place. Now, I'm happy as a clam. I really don't know how happy clams are, but I've always heard that. Um, that I get the the famous Nashville sound. Right. You know, I get the great, big, fat Nashville sound. Right. But I don't have to curtail everything I do mm -hmm. like a lot of the drummers in Nashville. These guys are great players, but it's like, hey, man, you can't play a role right there because I'm going to go, uh, you know, right. or front porch, pickup truck, grandma, grandpa, my dog, <laughs> a beer Saturday night, smoking a doobie, you know, uh, mm -hmm. whatever they're singing about. Right. You, you, the drummer has to kind of, and, and I, my, my hat's off to these drummers mm -hmm. because they play great and they can play anything at the drop of a hat. They mm -hmm. read music and, and they, they get this great sound, but I get the best of all worlds because I get a, a fat Nashville sound, right. but I'm able to play the Skinner songs, which requires much ass kicking. Yes. You know? Well, and, and speaking of that, on kicking, I want to talk about Street Survivors. Came out in 2020, and you narrated it. You were a huge part of this. My movie. It, the, the movie, our, our and, movie. and it, it was a hit, and continues to be a top viewed movie. I mean, how did this come together, Artemis? Well, we wanted, you know, Leonard Skinner fans, are not getting younger. I'm not. <laughs> and I wanted to tell the fans what the band went through that day and that night and leading up to us taking that plane into Mississippi pine trees this big around. Um, I wanted to tell that story so that everybody would know what the band went through. And I was very proud of my band. They met their deaths. Um, um, Str very strong. They they went out like heroes. Now there was there was some yelling, mad at the pilots and everything for screwing up and not putting enough gas in the airplane. Hey, did you put gas in the airplane? Yeah, I think so. You know, it's like they paid the dear price. Mm -hmm. I don't blame them. They died. Their families lost their their husbands and brothers, and fathers. But they made a bad mistake, yeah. and so there was there was some yelling. At, at the cockpit, but all of the men and women on that plane met their deaths with, with, with uh, honor. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a lot of, uh, it was very quiet when we lost all of our engines and we are now a glider right. and we're going down and you know, we're not going up. And uh, there's Mississippi pine trees coming, we're in the clouds, we come out of the clouds, we're over the trees. You know, I heard one guy go, oh, trees. You know, Clayton Johnson, that was his name. He worked for Bill Graham. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, when the plane became a glider, it was very quiet. Everybody was praying. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, so, you know, that, that day, I think about it all the time. Yeah. I think about it every day. 
But for 40 years, I was really sad. And I, I, I would count down the days, almost a month out of what I was doing, where I was, what I, who I saw. And then I, that's 40 years of that. Mm -hmm. So that was six years ago. And I decided to not be sad anymore right. and have a cathartic moment where I got this movie and answer to your point mm -hmm. about the movie, I wanted to get it out. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get it out of my system so I didn't have to live with it every day. I wanted people to see and share it with me. Now, there's highs, there's triumphs, there's tragedies. Right. Of course, the plane crash is horrible. We lost Ronnie mm -hmm. and Steve and Cassie and Dean and our pilot and co-pilot. Uh, they didn't want to die. No. Uh, but, but also, you, you came through this. I mean, you know, and just like your father, who was a Marine also, Artemis, I mean, you know, you being a Marine, I mean, you, you got out of the plane, you got out of the crash, and you went and brought help. I forced my way through the wreckage, cut myself up, made a path to go back in, and I thought it was going to explode into flames. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that we were totally out of fuel. Right. Um, so I went back in and got a guy and helped him through the hole that I had made. I looked around. I saw that all my friends were going to need help. Mm -hmm. So I did a little bit of Marine Corps triage. I made a, a, a tourniquet or two, told people to hold their wounds, but I went for help. Right. Because that's the only thing that was going to help. So I used my training and tried to remember our heading. And, you know, I, I'm a pilot. I, I've, I flew that particular plane. My father was killed in a plane crash. Mm -hmm. All my friends were killed in a plane crash. I've been in three airplane crashes. I thought that I was qualified to tell the story of what went down. And I got with some people, uh, Cleopatra Films and Records out in California. And uh, we spent 22 hours doing the screenplay. Mm -hmm. I cried, I laughed, I punched the wall, I screamed, you know, I got mad, uh, got through it, got the screenplay. The director wrote the script. And of course, Hollywood yeah. went overboard on nudity right. uh, because there's foul language, there's drugs. It's not for children. But, I, but to me, that what makes it so iconic, Artemis, is your voice. Is your voice is the thread that helps hold this together, and it, and it brings that honesty to it. Well, they asked me to do a voiceover. I, I did several things out in L.A., and I flew out there six times. Um, but, uh, and I don't like to fly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just say my prayers and leave it up to God. Um, if I have to go, I have to go. I lived in Jerusalem, Israel, mm -hmm. in the castle of King David on Mount Zion for three years studying. Had my family over there, my, my sons. And had a band there. And, and I had a band there <laughs> and uh, put a band together. And the Diaspora Yeshiva band for the uh, school. But I was a bodyguard to um, a lot of, uh, about 10 rabbis. Um, because of my Marine Corps training, mm -hmm. but I studied and had and played music, and it's a beautiful place. Uh, but I wanted to tell the story, and Hollywood, of course, they took the ball, a little bit too much nudity, mm -hmm. um, something. But everything in the movie is is accurate, except for one thing, and I'll point that out, and I gladly point it out. The airplane that we crashed was a 240, you know, Pratt and Whitney powered. Convair, mm -hmm. and it was tricycle landing gear, one on the nose, two under the wings, right. and it's, it's set up, the tail set up, and the first plane we had uh, was Jerry Lee Lewis's Rolls-Royce powered turboprop. I flew wow. both planes, and that turboprop was responsive. We got rid of that and got this red, white, and blue, you know, puddle jumper, mm -hmm. And uh, it just wasn't a good airplane. It was built in 1947. Oh, my gosh. And our, our uh, Rolls-Royce powered, the one that Jerry Lee Lewis uh, had, was uh, 1948. Mm -hmm. And I was born in 48, and I'm okay, and I felt like the plane was okay. But we went to the 47. Mm -hmm. We were going to get rid of that, buy a Learjet for just the band, buy two brand-new tour buses for the girls right. and for our crew and let them design the floor plans and be comfortable, follow the equipment. And our time in the air would be, instead of two and a half hours, it'd be 45 minutes. Zip, zip, zip. Wow. So we were gonna get a brand new Learjet. That mm -hmm. was the dream, that was the plan, and it was gonna happen. But we crashed, Ronnie was killed, and it, it changed everything. So the movie depicts 
you know, my sons wrote mu music for the soundtrack. Right. My band, APB, mm -hmm. uh, Scott and, and uh, Jerry did the heavy lifting. They wrote it with uh, Warren Haynes, a song called Street Survivors, right. title track. Mm -hmm. We do it every night. I love it. I always channel John Bonham, you know, and play in my drum part on that song. And it's, I'll put it up against any Southern rock song ever written. And uh, Street Survivor. Right. And then we had a friend here in Nashville named Brian Mabry. And he has a bus company. Mm -hmm. And he's a mover and a shaker. And he wrote this beautiful piece called In Memory Of. And it's instrumental, and wow. it's just beautiful. And they used it all through the movie. Mm -hmm. Then there was a young man named Chris Rittenauer out in California that wrote the kind of Game of Thrones background music right. that was like lulling in mm -hmm. the background. And sets it was, the mood. It, it sets the movie. It was ominous. Um, and then a friend of mine wrote this piece. Uh, his name is William Stevens. He just built a new studio in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Wow. Uh, he bought a 30,000 square foot building in downtown Winston-Salem. It's beautiful. And uh, he wrote this little six minute piece uh, that is one of the most amazing pieces of music. So the soundtrack is beautiful. Mm -hmm. The movie itself, the actors and actresses that portrayed us in our 20s, these people put their hearts and souls into these roles. Right. And because there was a lawsuit against us the entire time, mm -hmm until we won in the uh, Court of Appeals up in New York City, until we won that lawsuit, these kids were doing a movie that could have been shelved, right. and yet they sat on these uh, sets. We used three different aircraft. We used Cary Grant. You've heard of Cary uh, Grant? Oh, yes. We used his private plane for interior shots. Wow. We had pieces of another plane but it wasn't Convairs that we used in the movie. Oh. It was a C-117 tail dragger. Mm -hmm. We call, in the Marines, I flew in them all the time. We called them Goonie Birds. Right. But it's got a great looking cabin up front. Mm -hmm. It's twin engines and they sound good. They're reciprocal <laughs> and it's, it, it's got that chug. Right. So it looked good in the air, the CGI stuff that they use, because mm -hmm. the movie's very intense. It is. I had to stop watching it because every time it made me boohoo. Right. I watched it about 12 times. And you lived through it. I mean, I think even, you know, so many of us as Southern Rock fans and huge fans of Leonard Skinner and, and... Yeah, you're a player. You know, and all the music that you've accomplished, it's like, you know, it's, it's just powerful. It's moving because, you know, it was, it was such a, a hit for all of us you know, to lose so many great musicians that time. And even as you and I were talking before we came in studio, you know, with uh, Ed King passing away, you know, within the past few years, then Gary Rossington, um, you know, it's hard. It's, it's hard, but you continue to carry this torch. And the great Steve Gaines. Right. You know, and of course, Alan Collins. I mean, think about mm -hmm. it. I, I played with the four horsemen of Leonard Skinner, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, and I, I played with many, many great guitar players, but Gary and Alan, and, and Steve Gaines and Ed King, uh, they are right up there w with anybody. I, I've jammed with uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, and I, I miss Stevie Ray. Uh, oh, he had on. just gotten back his, his, his chops and mm -hmm. his life and everything, and he was with the great, he was out there with Buddy Guy and Eric Clapton and, right. and doing all the great stuff. And then we lost him in a helicopter. Mm -hmm. I flew in that helicopter. Wow. You know, I was but, gonna bring up also in, yeah. in, a few years ago, uh, you played as well on the uh, Eric Clapton tribute album. I did. Uh, I shot Back the sheriff. The, yeah, I shot the sheriff. Because it was always played kind of reggae, and I, I thought, man, I'm going to play it a little more rock, <laughs> you know. And uh, but uh, yeah, I was, I was, I played on a couple of those tribute. Mm -hmm. One for ZZ Top. And, right. Um, I, when, anytime they ask, I played with William Shatner on a Christmas album. <laughs> um, you know, and, and it was hilarious. <clears throat> he was in Las Vegas, and they sent. <clears throat> I did my track remotely yeah. in Asheville, North Carolina at Echo Studios, and I played on it, and they sent it immediately to him out there, and he came back, he goes, I love it. And I said, please tell Mr. Shatner that I'm, I'm a horseman as well, you know, because right. he, he loves horses. Yes, and he is. I was born in Louisville. I, I, I was raised on horseback. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, and Guy Williams. raised in Tennessee. I, I, I was raised in Tennessee over in Fentress County, right. Jamestown. It is so laid back in Jamestown, Tennessee, that it takes them two hours to watch 60 Minutes. 
I tell you what, it is so great to have you on, Artemis. I just want to bring up that the new album, Anthems, is coming out in February. It's going to be on vinyl, obviously on digital, CD. The uh, Artemis Pile Band, APB, is going to be on tour. You'll also be playing with Pile Tribe, your son's band. Yes, yeah, we, uh, I'm, I'm in two bands now. I had to whittle it down from six. Because <laughs> you're in demand, because you're that good. Well, you know, I'm 75 years old. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my, my son that I live with, he always goes, Dad, now remember, you're elderly. And, <laughs> and I'm, I keep arguing, I am not elderly. But, you know, it's, at some point, you have to be sensible. Right. You know, I've always tried to eat right and take good care of myself. Mm -hmm. And you're, we're not promised tomorrow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I have a big family in Fentress County. My mother had eight brothers and sisters. My grandfather uh, was a road builder and had quarries and raised cattle, uh, prize-winning cattle. Uh, Guy Williams, I'm a Williams. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, I, I love Tennessee. The, the smell of the ground after a rainfall, the moss on, on the north face of the trees, um, all, all of the gra granite all around us here in Nashville, you know, the state house. And I'm related to Alvin C. York, and he, wow. he stands on guard up there at the State House. Right. I'll tell you what, Artemis, we're so thrilled you're still here with us, still making great music. Be sure to order, pre order your copy of Anthems, but also go see Artemis and the band live. Uh, it's just an honor. And also watch the great movie, uh, Street Survivors. Hopefully, a book will be released down the road also with some new chapters added from the past year. The book is finished, but. Um there are, I have to add the new chapters, man. You, you kind of uh, hit me to that <laughs> when you were saying that, because th I've thought about mm -hmm. it. There's many more chapters. Right. And I, I, of course, I got Gary Rossington and his slide solo mm -hmm. on Freebird with Dolly Parton. Wow. Against all odds before Gary passed away. Right. You know, we were able to work together with Kent Wells and get his iconic slide solo on iconic Freebird with iconic you know, Dolly Parton. So to me, it's just, it's that much more of a tribute to Gary's life as well. Definitely. And, um, you know, Dolly knows how much it meant to, to me and mm -hmm. the whole band and uh, to, to be on there, you know, with Gary. Right. So it's, it's also our tribute to Gary, mm -hmm. uh, being able to get him on there. And uh, thank incredible. you for you know, letting us talk about anthems. Definitely. I love the name, don't you? I do too, because they are anthems that we've all grown up with. Artemis Pyle, thank you so much for coming on the show. Great having you on. All right, man. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of the Bobby Bones Show.